Hey guys, Mark Holthy here, Canadian immigration lawyer, ex-immigration officer, and former high school teacher, welcoming all of you to another live Q&A. This one is, is going to be super interesting because I think many of you have seen what's happening in the United States. And for those of you who are down there in the U.S., you need to definitely tune in and pay attention to what we're going to talk about today. Canada is awesome. It really is. And I'm not saying that just from the fact I'm a Canadian immigration lawyer and an ex-immigration officer, but it truly is. And we're not the only ones saying it. So in a world where, um, as we've got people that are just tuning in and joining, in a world where there are people in the U.S. wondering about their future, companies who are desperately struggling to get the skilled talent they need with Donald Trump basically announcing a shutdown and some of the most critically important work permits. Wow, I'm grateful to be here in Canada. And so stay tuned because I'm going to talk a lot about that in just a little bit. But yes, Canada is awesome. And I'm going to tell you why that is the case. So, all right, you can see here we've got a little bit of a change in how the um, and how the questions are being uh, displayed here when people post comments. So you can see here, uh, is it safe to enter Canada, Amherst? Okay, so you guys will see as we as we start pulling this up. Uh, let me just close this. I've got a duplication there. That's why. Okay, so here we've got uh, it says Jan's watching from Myanmar. Make sure you just post. And the reason I do this, guys, is just to give people a chance for it to get caught up because this is feeding through YouTube. It's feeding through Facebook and also Periscope. So. Uh, yeah, so you can see here, all of your background, your thumbnail images are now appearing on the screen. So thank you, Ecamm. <laughs> awesome. All right, we've got Deidre here is from Jamaica. She's listening on YouTube. Welcome, Deidre. We've got Victor in Calgary. Hey, how's it going? All right, we, uh, and we have a Facebook user who's already asking questions. Hold off on those questions. We're not going to answer those just yet. We've got Karan, who's sup, Mark, from Delhi. Big news from the U.S. Uh-huh, it is. And we're going to talk about that in just a second here. Let's see who else we have. We've got uh, Farzad is tuning in on Facebook. <clears throat> um, <laughs> Naveen says, those are some fine shoes too. He says, even Mark is awesome. <laughs> That's how you get your comment posted. Fantastic. Karen says, everyone will come to Canada now. Yeah, especially with the U.S. basically shutting down. And I want you guys to pay attention because over the next little while, I'm going to be doing a ton of podcasts, a ton of YouTube videos, all directed towards companies in the U.S. who are looking um, at options for trying to figure out how they're going to get, um, you know, the, the workers that they need. And I'm going to share some unique made in Canada solutions that are going to be available to them. All right. Nikhil he is currently residing in San Diego. Great to have you joining us, Nikhil. Um, Laxman says, hey, Mark, please can someone welcome me to Canada as I'm newly arrived here. Woo! Big shout out to you, Laxman. Fantastic. It's awesome to have you here. That's great. Um, right in the midst of everything that's happening, this is awesome that you are one of the newest arrivals here in Canada and the floodgates are going to be open. We're going to talk about more about that in just a little bit. Okay, let's see who else we have here. Uh, Abdur has got some questions, but he's from India. We'll give you a shout out. Um, this Facebook user says, watching my favorite live show from Bangladesh. You're awesome too, Mark. <laughs> Thanks so much. Now, I can't tell if this is the favorite live show or if it's a different one they're watching while watching me simultaneously. <laughs> Not sure, but awesome. Uh, Ameka Mashi, great to have you as always. And I hope that you are sorting out all those issues with your travel plans so that you can get here and be one of the next newly arrived Canadians as well. All right, Ambu's in Miami. Great to have you. This is kind of cool because we got your picture and everything that's showing up now. It's not just the Facebook if you do have a thumbnail. So very cool. And then we've got Callum here. Great to have you. Hold off, my friend, and we will... I don't know what that image is, <laughs> but hold off and we'll get to those questions. Yes, we've got um, someone, Uganda, uh, Suanya, or Roderick. Excellent. Okay, then we got classy girl here. She says, the color of your shirt looks good on you. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. All right. Hi from Florida. Jesse, welcome. Great to have you. Uh, we also have Olu from Nigeria. Uh, where else? We've got Farzad is Bangladesh. 
Uh, we've got Alpha Tammy, who is, um, yeah, Alpha Tammy's from Iraq. Great to have you joining us. Uh, Deidre says, yep, no immigration for the rest of 2020. Wow. Yes, Deidre, this is insane. Insane if you're one of those people down in the U.S. But hey, this is Trump, right? This is Donald Trump. Uh, Delphin, student here inside Canada. Welcome, Delphin. Great to have you. Uh, we've got Ibtisam is um, via Facebook from Pakistan. Welcome. Uh, Amit, good to see you as well. Great group of people tuning in here. Um, Toronto, Grajesh, great to have you. Um, okay, let's see here. Looks like, wow, as I'm doing this live feed, I can see that my uh, my computer is maxed out. <laughs> I just got a notification that it's not recording this to the computer anymore. Clearly, this high definition is eating up my space. So hopefully it's not going to crash our system today. Okay, we've got someone from England. Awesome. Welcome, welcome. Uh, let's see here as we scroll down. We're going to jump into this in a little bit. Another Facebook user says, your videos are amazing. Thank you. Guys, the reason these videos are so good is because of all of you. I just sit here and answer questions. You guys are the ones that are actually providing um, the, the amazing content by the questions you ask. So fantastic. Uh, Diana, welcome. Good to have you here. Um, let's see, we've got uh, Grajesh in Toronto. Uh, Assad is over in Pakistan. We've got another one that's saying, hi, Mark. Can't quite read that, but uh, that's welcome. Um, let's see what else we've got here. Uh, Sajida says, hi, great to have you here. Um, Salah is Bangladesh. Uh, let's see here. We've got Evelyn is over in, in Windsor, Ontario. Welcome, Evelyn. Wow, it's going to be hard to get through everybody's here. Dalbir uh, at Nafu is Ethiopia. Great to have someone from Ethiopia. And there is Igor. He is tuning in from Calgary. As you guys know, Igor was a former client who's now a member of the Healthy Immigration Law team. So great shout out to you, Igor. Um, Joad says, always charged up. I am today. I actually had a good night's rest last night, which was awesome. Okay, we've got Haji. Great to have you here. Um, Sujata says, where does all your energy come from? I'll tell you. It's because my business has never been better. Thank you so much, Donald Trump. You have been just the most amazing, amazing partner in my Canadian immigration law firm. I don't think he even knew it. He's just been so, so helpful with all of the restrictions he put on the US. Uh, guys, I do a lot of individual work with all of you, which is fantastic. But I do a ton of cross-border work with large global companies, many US-based companies that do work in Canada. And so you can imagine, what does it mean when Trump says they cannot get any more intercompany transfers, they can't um, get any new H-1B visas for the skilled workers? Hey, as I'm gonna show you guys in just a second here, Canada is awesome and Trump is just making sure that that statement is more true than ever. <laughs> awesome. Okay, uh, Kanisha is over in Granada. Awesome. Rami in Egypt. I have been watching this amazing series. Well, I watched a series um, and I can't even remember what it was called, but I'm fascinated with archaeology. One day I'm going to get to Egypt. Um, actually, I was watching it on where they're pulling, where they pulled a lot of the stone uh, for the creation of the pyramids. There's these, these stone quarries and all of the digs and everything that's going on there. Man, Egypt is so, so cool. Okay, we're just about done giving shout outs. We'll give Marie a shout out from the Philippines. Harpreet over in Manitoba, which is where I did my University of uh, Manitoba Law School. Um, we've got Sai Felds over in Bangladesh. Um, Nods is also Bangladesh. Uh, Valentina's in Colombia, South America. Awesome. We've got Haiti. Uh, we have um, Darshan, who's apparently Tom Cruise. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, we've got Anand is in Toronto. We've got Janik is in India. We've got Shohan in Toronto. I know I'm not doing a great job of pronouncing you guys' names, but hey, I'm sure trying. Uh, Saiful says, hello. Hello, Saiful. Good to have you. We've got Naki is in Uganda. Um, Jack's over in India. Welcome, Jack. Um, let's see here. Uh, we've got someone from Nepal. And uh, yeah, and then now it's starting all the comments. So great, Trump. We'll tweet Mark's video now, taking credit. Well done, uh, Karan. Well done. We've got Merrick over in the Czech Republic. And guys, wow. Uh, we've got Amen in Canada. And yes, Abdur, Trump is totally losing high skilled workers without a doubt. Um, We've got, yeah, Amen is over in Vancouver. Great. 
Okay, and then we've got some people that are posting questions. Hold off on that. We'll get to those in a little bit. Walid's in Morocco. Um, wow, we've just got a ton here. Okay, well, I'm going to stop here. Uh, Igor says the new slogan for U.S. elections, make Canada great again. Boom! That is so awesome. That is so true. Okay, uh, tried to visit Ethiopia too. It is an amazing country. Yes, I actually have a wonderful client with this permanent resident application in the queue from Ethiopia right now. Okay, and then a shout out to Error 404. You're not an error <laughs> uh, in Morocco. Okay, so we'll stop that for now. Uh, I'll start giving shout outs, even though there's a ton of people like Tom Abraham from Kuwait. Um, you guys are all over, which is fantastic. We've got a great group of people that are now on here, and now I want to share what is going on. Okay, I, I absolutely want to share what's going on. Some of you are wondering, what the heck's going on here, Mark? Why are all of these people, um, you know, what, what's the big deal with this uh, Canada being wonderful? Well, some of you may not know, and I'm actually going to try to call this out. I'm going to shift to my next screen here. Some of you may not know. Um, let's just see here. I think you guys can see me. Come on, what's going on here? Oh, there it is. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm working through the, the logistics here, and I really hope that I'm not going to run out of space doing this video. Okay. So with this, you can see um, there was this article, and many of you probably know and understand at this stage that our uh, the, the 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 president of the United States, Donald Trump, now has instituted restrictions on foreign workers. And so you guys have to understand the context of this. If we go through here, there's this lovely little Q and A, and you can see right here. And I'm not going to dwell a lot on this, but understand these restrictions are massive. So, new proclamation, which took effect immediately on Monday, denies entry to the United States to four major. And when I say, when we highlight major there, like, this is massive. So, four major non-immigrant visa categories. He has basically taken the foreign worker program in the U.S. and knocked the legs right out from underneath it. It is absolutely unbelievable um, what has happened here. But H-1Bs are the skilled workers. This is like the, the LMIA process in Canada, which do not have nearly the same level of restriction uh, that Canada does in the beginning, but it's kind of like the L1, uh, sorry, it's like the LMIA process, the job offer process. The Ls are intercompany transfers. The Js here are all of those cultural and educational, they're not the, the traditional student visas per se, but the Js are the work permits that are available for, for all of those purposes, which are used so heavily uh, by companies. And basically they're all gone. So if you're watching this and you're an HR manager of a, a company in the US and you're wondering, oh my goodness, what are we gonna do? Well, consider Canada. Why? I'll show you why. Because Canada is awesome, says the Shopify CEO, <laughs> and uh, Tobias Lutke. And you can see here, guys, Shopify, if you're not aware of it, is a, an absolutely massive company. And they have understood the value of coming to Canada with their companies. T same time zone, you know, basically it's seamless whether you're working in Canada or in the US. Most of us are virtual anyways. So those are in the IT fields, things like that. I just had a consultation with a company today that were in the process of setting up a company in Canada to allow them to move their workers to Canada. This is the place. Canada is awesome. So you can see here this Ottawa-based Shopify, based in Ontario, right now, um, he has totally been sold on how Canada is awesome. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time going through this, but trust me, the opportunities here are endless for corporations and companies looking to transfer people to Canada. Now, you guys already know, many of you, although the travel restrictions are in place in many countries and things are not completely open right now because of the coronavirus, there is very few countries in the world that can actually compete with what Canada offers, even for you individual candidates who are looking to immigrate through express entry. So. Our international student program is fantastic. You come, you get a study permit. If you go for go to school for at least two years, you can get a, a three-year open work permit. And most of our provinces have provincial nominee programs that can allow you to transition from a foreign worker to permanent residence. Our federal program, the much heralded, awesome express entry program is one of the best in all of the world. You know, in the in the in when everything was normal and we didn't experience um, such 
you know, the challenges of the coronavirus, people were getting permanent residence in under six months. That is a permanent resident of Canada. So, so those of you who are posting questions, hold off for a second, my guy, hold off you guys. I will get to those. Absolutely, I will. But this is really important. So here's one article. All right. Take a look at this one here. So we've had issues with China and um, some of the most notable um, and foremost um, authorities and, um, and educators have emphasized as well that our immigration system is the thing that is going to save us. It's the thing, our, our aggressive um, opening of the doors, notwithstanding the challenges, that's why Canada is going to be successful in the future. Let's flip to this one right here, okay? Why Canada still needs immigrants despite soaring unemployment. So this unemployment is temporary. Things are going to lift. People are going to go back to work. There is going to be the, the jobs that were suspended or lost are going to be revived. Canada is going to leap ahead of these other countries because of our willingness and our ability to keep our doors open to the highly skilled, highly productive, just awesome international um, talent that comes to our country. When the U.S. is closing the door, we are going to be getting the best and the brightest from all over the world. Okay. So what I want to show you here, guys, and this is something that maybe uh, many of you are not fully aware of. In Canada, our immigration minister, Marco Minicino, proposed adding a total of 1 million new permanent residents to Canada by 2022. This isn't new. This was announced back in March, but this is a slight increase. This is a slight increase, guys. Even in the midst of the pandemic when he announced this, um, this slight increase that raises the annual immigration levels to right about 0.9% currently. So almost 1% of our total population is our target. That's our goal. That's what we're shooting for. Okay. And you can see here, this is our minister, uh, Marco Minicino, great guy, making some really, really positive steps for our country, really leading in a very, very positive way. And he talks about some of the challenges, but immigration is what drives growth in our country. Let's take a look at these levels plans for those of you who haven't seen this before. This is the official government site. And you can see here, this is the information for the levels plans for up to 2022. So you would expect, okay, Canada is, is you know, they're going to restrict, they're going to reduce. This here, March the 12th, 2020, they could have totally made changes if they wanted to. But look at these target levels, okay? These are the proposed targets. Let's see if I can sketch this out a little bit. It kind of jumps into me here a bit, but you guys can see it. Um, let's see. Wow, that is a little bit bigger than I thought. Let's push it this way and see if I can expand it. There, now we can see it all. Okay, I'm hovering over it, but that's okay. Look at this guy. So federal skilled, federal high skilled. This is you guys, okay? This is you guys outside of Canada. These are coming through these, these programs. If you click on number one here, you can see that it includes the federal skilled worker program, the federal skilled trade program, and everybody inside Canada, all right? So if we look at this, 2020 this year, the low range is 88,500. The high range is 100,000. You can see in 2021, same thing. The high range is 100,000. In 2022, the high range is 100,600. Uh, 100, now understand, the coronavirus is going to affect this. Like it's going to be really hard for them to meet these targets um, just because of the restrictions. But once we get a handle on this, things are going to happen and things are going to move forward like gangbusters. So I just wanted to let you guys know that. It's super, super important that you realize that where other countries like Trump right here are basically, there's our man, where basically he is taking this here and he is, uh, he's basically saying, we don't want anyone else in here. We're going to make Canada great again. Wait a minute. Did he say that? No, Igor said that, but it's true. Trump could have said that. Make Canada great again because that's what he's doing. And I am so excited and that's why I'm full of energy today. That's why I'm so happy to be doing what I'm doing. So remember, a uh, couple things I want to give quick shout outs to. Go to the YouTube channel if you haven't. This seems to be the process, the place where the best information is. And subscribe. Hit that bell, the notification, and then you can be made aware when I go live again. I also want to point out the Twitter account. This is where we're pumping out a ton of information. You can see we're even live here right now. Um, but this is where a lot of our tweets and a lot of the most current information is being pushed out. Seems like Twitter's the best place to do it. Of course, many of you are on the Canadian Immigration Facebook page. Totally cool. One of our private groups, 
many of you are in the Express Entry Law private group that's got a, almost 125,000 people in it. It would be a whole lot more if Facebook didn't throttle that. And I'm going to be starting to do a whole bunch more um, with respect to study permits, post-grad work permits, um, obviously a whole new series of uh, information and videos and podcasts are going to be directed towards helping foreign companies figure out how to benefit from what Canada has to offer because it's awesome compared to other countries that may be restricting. All right, so there we go. Um, <laughs> now, what I'm gonna do with all of your comments, you guys have been posting so, so many comments here and it's not possible for me to get back and to go through all of them. So as always, I apologize for those who I'm not gonna be able to get to their comments, but I want you to know that I do care about you and I'm gonna see if Igor and I can go back and try to answer some of the questions, but Facebook it's easier. I've discovered that YouTube is a little bit more difficult to answer live questions. It's really hard to respond to them, so my apologies. Okay, but I'm going to start fielding your questions right now. Remember, subscribe if you do have an urgent matter that's really case specific, in other words, specific to you. You really, really need to go to the firm website and book a consult. That's the best way you can get your question answered. I'll just pull this up quick so that you guys can see it. And, um, and then you'll know where to go. Igor, if you're watching this, <clears throat> which obviously you are, you can share with them um, this page here. But all you have to do is just click on start here. And um, yeah, and then you can uh, go forward from here. I'm assuming that my audio is okay. I keep getting these notifications that my audio needs to be updated, but um, I think it's okay, which is good. Let's dive in and let's see what these listeners, <clears throat> these faithful listeners, have um, have in store for us today because it all comes down from you. Um, okay, so let's start here. Okay, actually, Nods, I'm going to give you a big shout out because you tagged Moabul on Facebook to let him know that I was going live. That's one good way of sharing it. Okay, now we have some massive ones like this, which are really big. Um, Eric, I'm not sure if I can get to this. He says, I was able to finally land in Canada last April the 1st. Eric, fantastic. Uh, do it yourself thanks to your course. Oh, good. Okay, so like you guys know, and some of you probably don't, there's been a string of people that have now been um, have been accessing and purchasing the course just recently. I'm just going to flip right back here so that you guys can see what, uh, what Eric's talking about here. I'm going to remove Eric very carefully here um, so that you guys can see it. At least I think I'm going to remove him. Maybe I'm not. <laughs> Bear with me here. This is a little bit tricky. Okay, there we go. Uh, wow, this is tricky. We'll close that one and we'll close that one. Bear with me, guys. Okay, so here's where you can go. And all you have to, don't show that message again. Um, okay, so here's where you can go. And this is where you can access my, my complete step-by-step -step express entry do-it-yourself course. That is what Eric was referring to. All you have to do is go here, um, see the courses and, and just purchase now. And if you take advantage right now, all you have to do is type in EEDIY50. And those of you who actually take the time to watch these videos, as you can see, I don't advertise this all over the place. If you um, if you hit this access and you type in the code, you can get it for 50% off. So go check it out. Full comprehensive guide. All right. Back to Eric's question here. Okay. Let's see what Eric has. <laughs> so bear with me. Okay, we'll pull him up again. He says here, and let's pull this up here. Um, okay, thanks to, like your videos so much that you uh, even chose to settle in Alberta. Oh, that is awesome. Eric's in Alberta because of the videos. Very cool. Anyways, next on my list is to present the medical surveillance undertaking to Alberta Health. Okay, while I called for an appointment within the 30-day window, my appointment got bumped off to July 20th due to COVID. Will this not affect my compliance to the reporting period? I'm wondering if that's also the reason why my PR card is taking so long to arrive. PR cards are just taking a long time. So don't feel bad about that. <clears throat> That's just a reality of the situation. You can go on online. Actually, I'll just uh, pull, um, I'll pull uh, Eric off of here. Um, Eric, you can go online and you can see the processing times have just gone up astronomically. Anything that has to do with paper, the government is taking a long time. Express entry is still working in Canada because it's electronic. But that's with your PR card. But don't worry about it, Eric. You're totally fine with the medical surveillance thing. They totally understand that there are just issues because of the coronavirus. And so you need not worry at all. Just continue to move forward. Um, attend that appointment on July the 20th. And you're going to be good to go, my friend. So big shout out. 
Thanks for purchasing a subscription to the course. I'm glad it helped you. And it's just one more way that I'm trying to, I honestly believe everyone that you, every single one of you has the right to, to have an immigration lawyer help you. And if it's, whether it's via my do it yourself courses, whether it is through a simple consultation with me while you're doing it yourself, um, whether it's retaining our firm to help you and to collaborate with you to get your application done properly, all of those avenues, I believe, and I'm on a mission with this, that every single one of you deserves the right to be able to, to have the help of an immigration lawyer. You shouldn't be in a situation where you, you can't afford to get that help that you deserve and then settle for something less. So that's the message that I'm trying to get out. And I'm super happy, Eric, that you benefited from it because that's the reason I created the course. That's why I spent those hundreds of hours doing it. It was for people like you. So big shout out, my friend. Okay, Jatin says, any possibility uh, for CRS 467 to get the OINP nomination and the Human Capital Priority General Stream? Jatin, I'm going to say yes, there is a possibility. You can see that they've kind of focused on knock codes lately, but um, but yes, that is in a range that I believe eventually you should be able to, to get into that, um, uh, that area where you receive a notification of interest. I've got a couple clients right now that were fortunate recently to be pulled into the um, the recent notifications of interest through the human capital priority stream. Those of you who are wondering what this is, this is the Ontario Provincial Nominee Program um, where they pull people out of the express entry pool who have submitted profiles that fit with whatever you know particular um, uh, you know work experience or uh, human capital level that they're looking at drawing from. So good question, Jatin. Okay, uh, Nikhil says, Mark, my express entry was approved as per my call with the IRCC agent. That is so awesome. The COPR delayed, yes. If I get a job in the meantime and when borders open and then I don't have a COPR, can I apply for a work permit? Your email, if you got, um, you got a call with the agent who says, yes, it's approved. You're waiting for the COPR. Obviously, that confirmation of permanent residence, um, if you're outside of Canada, it's going to need to be issued to you. And you should be able to be, um, you should receive that as well as the passport visa uh, once things kind of open up, you know. But right now, they haven't quite taken the step where they're allowing people to travel without a visa. It's just too complicated. So if you're outside of Canada, the finalization is going to be delayed. Um, if you're inside Canada, well, then they're sending out those emails with the letter that says, congratulations, you're a permanent resident. So super happy for you, Nikhil. That's awesome. Very, very cool. Okay, let's see if we can whip through some more. Okay, Amen says, hey, Mark, you're doing great. I'm in Vancouver. Excellent. Asked a question some time back and now I got my COPR. I sent my passport. Do you have an idea how long it takes to get the PR card? Thank you always. Okay, two people have asked about PR cards. So let's dive in and let's take a look. So I'm going to, so that's a good question I'm in. And congratulations, my friend. That is fantastic. Let's go here and let's just pull it up. So IRCC, and understand these processing times, you cannot guarantee are going to be accurate. But let's just go here and let's take a look and see what they say. So if you go here to the PR card, you go to permanent resident cards. This one for you guys is going to be, no, I'm waiting for my first card. And then I click processing times. And you'll see here, do you see why it's taking so long? This is just an estimate, 95 days. This 95 days processing, which was last updated when? June 23rd. What's today? It's all a blur for me, you guys. Is today the 23rd? I think it is. <laughs> Let's see. Yes, today is June the 23rd. So as of today, you can see for new, it's taking an eternity. And you just have to accept the fact that it's going to be a long time to get your PR cards. But if you're here, you are a permanent resident. And the permanent resident card does not confer any more status to you than that approval email that with that letter that says you're a permanent resident. Um, or uh, if you were uh, someone who previously was able to actually land uh, and have their confirmation of permanent residence signed. Um, but understand, you guys are in awesome shape and uh, that's why, right? As of today, you can see that, that that change took place. And processing times are gonna, you just you can't always trust, right? And so you can see here, processing applications, everything has been impacted. Normally, provide accurate processing times. So we can't provide accurate processing times. They're doing the best they can, but it's all over the map just because of the inability to um, to predict, okay? So hopefully, and actually I, was, I wasn't even showing you guys that, my apologies. Back here, you can see, they can't 
So due to the impacts of coronavirus, we can't process applications normally nor provide accurate processing times. But for this right now, at least we know generally 95 days is kind of where they're at in this crazy world of COVID-19 as updated today, right now. Okay, awesome. All right, let's 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 power through some more questions here. Okay, uh, Caden says, with the extended travel restrictions, is the immediate family member exemption still going on? Okay, this is a whole different world. You, you have to understand that when it comes to the travel restrictions, there are orders in council that are based on outside of Canada and orders in council that, sorry, outside of the US and then ones in the US. And actually, I haven't seen the latest update. Um, it expired just recently and there should be a new order in council with the US uh, or at least a new agreement and I haven't seen if that's been posted, mostly because I've had consults all day today and I haven't had a chance to go and review and see. But there's two different how you're treated. If you're in the US, you're treated differently than outside of Canada. Um, our Prime Minister uh, announced recently the efforts that are being made to reunite families, um, in particular family members of Canadian citizens and permanent residents. So there is an ability for them now to no longer be restricted by the travel restrictions, but they're still impacted by the realities of immigration processing. And what I mean by that is, in some in some cases, they may need to have biometrics. They may need to apply for a temporary resident visa. And if I shift back here, and I'll show you guys what I mean here, if I shift back to the government's website on the processing times, this same advisory notice here is, um, it's, it's on pretty much all pages of immigration. But you can see here that they are prioritizing applications from Canadians trying to return to Canada, vulnerable people, and people who perform or support essential services. And so although on the surface, now if you are a family member, an immediate family member of a Canadian citizen or permanent resident, you are no longer restricted from traveling. Immigration is not prioritizing your your visitor application or whatever it may be that is allowing you to come and seek some form of status in Canada to be with your spouse or you know if it's a parent or whatever it might be. So understand that is a reality that you guys have to have to be aware of. And for your question here, Caden, that you'd posted, it really depends upon the circumstances of individuals. And um, I recommend that you consider booking a consult if you have specific things that you're looking for in terms of answers. Okay, Shamod says, hey Mark, is the processing of PR applications improving for FSW candidates considering the improvement of the situation in Canada? Hope they will um, be processed in six months going forward. Uh, Shamod, I do too. I really do. Understand that a lot of it is contingent upon what's happening in overseas countries. So the reason that they're not moving forward with any of those federal skilled worker program uh, candidates, like, you know, that are in the, the um, that have submitted their EAPRs and are just waiting. The reason that everything has been stalled out to a large extent is because of the conditions in the overseas countries. And understand, it's a lot easier for Canada to take their current immigration officers in Canada and have them work remotely from their homes. <clears throat> they have more control over that and they're better able to do that. But in an overseas mission outside of Canada, it is not so easy. They are traditionally always been wired to only work with all of the visa officers in the actual consulate or embassy. And so because of that, they've been working on these skeleton crews, which is causing them to basically suspend a lot of the processing of those visas overseas when um, just because they don't have the bodies to be able to do it. In some cases, a lot of the officers came home back to Canada and which has left only a skeleton crew in those countries. And that's a reality. So until that's lifted, you know, we can hope for that six months, but at the end of the day, it may not um, it may not be that. It may be longer. All right. Okay. Next we have, okay, my Tommy back again. Uh, it's hard not to remember that uh, that tagline. Okay. If you're taking two study programs that are far apart, how many days of no enrollment is allowed between the programs? This is important for post-grad work permits. My Tommy, this is something that I can't answer until I understand exactly your situation. I get your question. I really do but I need to get more information in order to be able to actually provide an answer on that. That's a super legal one. And it, there's a lot of things um, at play with that because it's, it's not just a simple matter of how many days between enrollment because there are other elements of study permit authorization that you need to maintain in order to keep your study permit. Can you switch schools? Yes, you can. But in terms of how much or how little is entirely case specific. Uh, and so I'm not, going to be able to answer that question in the way that you want me to. Um, 
but I do understand that immigration is being far more um, considerate and patient with people as they're transitioning in light of the current situation with COVID-19. So they are being far more willing to, to, to give people um, the benefit of the doubt uh, when there is a situation like this where you're doing everything that you can, but there, because of circumstances outside your control, you're kind of stuck in limbo, okay? Good question, very good question. Okay, um, all right, so Jode says, what can be done to check the status of a, sn uh, I think he meant, he's got SNIP, I think it's the SIMP he means, the Saskatchewan Immigrant Nominee Program. Like GCMS, is there anything by which can be checked the application stuck in SIMP because uh, most of the applicants filed after mine got nomination. Joe, the only thing you can do is to reach out directly to them. They always have a, a call center person that you can talk to and ask where the status is, um, but you can't like, they, they don't have GCMS notes where you can actually see the actual steps that the officers have taken. It's not the same as the federal program. So you just have to call Joe or inquire that way. Okay, um, okay, let's get this one from Masood. He says, hey Mark, standard work permit processing times from Abu Dhabi is 40 weeks. It's probably more. Um, keeping COVID delays aside, if my PNP supported work permit application, yet 204C is near completion, um, and I add my wife for an open work permit at a later stage of my application, would it delay finalization of my work permit application with another 40 weeks as well? Masood, excuse me, Masood, this is super complex, my friend. Um, you, I recommend that you book a consult, but the short answer to this situation is it depends. Now, normally they don't have to start from scratch when you're adding a spouse in, but most definitely it is going to extend and delay. But hey, you've identified something very carefully here. You're asking um, a, a question that probably isn't even the one that you should ask. You're going to add your spouse on. If she's coming with you, you're going to add her. But like you identified there, you said keeping COVID delays aside. Well, we don't even fully know the impact of COVID delays. So what might once have been 40 weeks could be even more. And that's insane. Insane to think a work permit would take that long. Months and months and months. Like 40 weeks. What is that? Like four? That's like 10 months? Like it's, it's crazy. And um, I feel for you, my friend. I really do. Okay. Let's see here. Uh, okay. Jephthah says, um, I bought your EDI guide and it's so awesome. Thanks. This is great. People are, <laughs> there's nothing better for marketing. And you guys can see, I don't do any paid marketing to, to, to sell the course. The course sells itself, but people like Jephthah and others that are, that are jumping on and saying that they purchased the course and, um, and that it's awesome. Thank you so much. That means a ton. For those of you who are tuning in a little bit later, I'm just going to jump over here to the, the course. And this, guys, is essentially it. So um, I've created an, uh, a do-it-yourself course that's all designed to walk you guys through the whole express entry process. When money is tight, you don't necessarily have the resources that you would, you would hope, you know, maybe to hire an immigration lawyer like myself this is the next best thing and this is why I created it, to allow you to have access to um, an immigration lawyer, but in a way that works both for me and for you when you're under a tight budget. And so this express, express entry, do-it-yourself course that I've created is full of, I wish I could even show you how many lessons, but learning the basics, preparing to submit express entry, your profile, the EAPR forms, documents, and I'll just flash, I'll highlight this. You can see the lessons, guys. We're already to 44. There's actually more than 44 lessons because I had to create one for biometrics and things like that. But document checklist is just chock full of examples, sample documents for everything that you need. So everything is here. It's all designed to make the process as easy as possible. In fact, when I designed it, I created it to such that my my 12 year old daughter at the time would be able to file her own express entry application if she used the course. So some may say, oh, it's so simple, Mark. You know, I can get this information online. Well, the reality is that's why I created the member resource section. This is where the rubber hits the road. The, the first five modules are all designed to help you guys walk through the process so that you don't make some of the most common mistakes people make. That's why I created it. And to, to save you time so you're not wasting hours and hours searching, you know, these immigration listservs and these 
these um, uh, these forums trying to find answers. It's all right there to guide you so you can do it fast. And then finally, I've got this whole member resource section that's all designed to give you videos and strategies on the more detailed, nuanced things like self-employed work experience, for instance. This is one I get so much. How do I prove work experience if I'm self-employed? It's a video. I walk you through it. I give you tips, strategies, a whole bunch of things to help you with that. You know, how to increase my language, um, eligibility, job offers, proof of funds, police certificates. Okay, I'm not gonna waste any more time talking about it, but at the end of the day, what I do wanna say is thank you so much, um, Jephtha, for giving me a shout out. I'm glad that you feel it is awesome. Okay, so he's got two questions. If I submit my EAPR before my IELTS expires in two months time, is it okay? Yes, I can say, I can confirm it's locked in at that stage. You will be okay. I have seen in the past, a few times where someone left it to less than a month and then by the time the officer opened it up and looked at it um, I would have personally judicially reviewed it but the client chose not to but they did disqualify them and say that their IELTS had expired even after they had submitted their EAPR when it was valid I think that was an, a reviewable error the client didn't choose to challenge it so my position is if as long as you have at least a month valid on your IELTS on the day you submit your EAPR then you're probably going to be okay all right. Um, he says, if I'm in Canada, is there a special PCC requirement for express entry or the usual police report from RCMP is good for EE? Okay, Jeff, that remember, like many of you, I'm going to pull this out. I'm going to go over here. I want to show you guys something. You need to make sure that you go here to the police certificate um, site, EEIRCC, that should pull it up. Okay, so if you go to how to get a police certificate here, you will see that you can choose the country. This is absolutely critical for you to pay attention to because here it's going to tell you exactly what you need to do. And you can see for the purposes of permanent residence, as you're going through here, oh, maybe I jumped it. Okay. Okay. Uh, applying for permanent residence. You don't need to provide a police certificate when you apply for permanent residence in Canada. Full stop. So some people do go ahead and get the RCMP. Um, the only time they ask for that is if someone has a name that matches or a date of birth that matches someone um, who does have a criminal record because they have access to it. So you don't need to provide it, Jephtha. Good question. Okay, um, Susan says, thanks for all your help in the past. We did get PR, another person. Ding, ding, ding. This is awesome. I love it when you guys come on and you share your story. Susan, fantastic. I'm so happy for you. Another fantastic client who had a great result. I'm so happy. This is why I love doing what I do. It really is. Okay, uh, okay, this is awesome. Some people are posting some stupid stuff, so I'm not even gonna put it up there, I'm not even gonna acknowledge them. Awesome, okay, let's see here. Um, okay, Rami says, when do you believe the federal skilled worker draw will resume? Okay, and you're at 475, you're, you, yeah, your, your profiles are uh, more and more piling up, worried the chance of getting an IT might eventually vanish. All of that is, is a reality, Rami, it totally is. Um, I think when it comes to express entry, there is a level where it just can't go much higher. And in the low 470s, in my view, is kind of the spot. Um, and I think long term, Rami, I know your age, when you have a birthday, it's going to drop to 470 and that's going to be terrible. For most people, right in that, that lower 472, 473, that range, in my mind, is really kind of the sweet spot. Because if you're going from a master's and that's really to get there, you need to be not much more than 30 years old, master's degree, three year skilled work experience and language, at least a CLB nine. OK, so those that's kind of the magic formula. But what I'm seeing is if you're then trying to go to a Ph.D. level and still have three years of skilled work experience, you know, from a master's to get even more points to push you up into 480. Well, one of the challenges is that your age it's pretty hard to do that without losing that extra five points for age. Um, and, and to get to go through school, a lot of people have to have worked while they were attending school outside of Canada almost to get into that high 470, 480 range with a master's degree. It's possible. Um, but I, right now with my clients, that is one of the things that I'm seeing. So you may still be okay around me, but the travel restrictions, they drive everything. The draws, I don't believe are going to start opening up until the travel restrictions are being lessened and people can then travel so that's my thought on that okay um okay evelyn says when will the spousal outland passport request start processing same thing evelyn you're in a situation where the visa office is abroad many of those officers the canadian ones came home and and so the 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 missions abroad are working on a skeleton crew 
And because of that, it's caused delays with everything. And as I showed you in the previous uh, screen, and I'll just jump back to that so that you can see Evelyn. Um, if I go back here and we just scroll up, it's not on here. We'll go back to the, let's see if I have the processing times. Yes, right here. You can see that they are prioritizing the applications from Canadian citizens, vulnerable people, and people who perform or support essential services. So that's the reality that you're dealing with. And um, I wish it was different, but for you and many people who are kind of sitting in limbo right now, hoping that you're, you can be reunited with your spouse, Unfortunately, um, you're just caught in that situation. So I really feel for you. I wish that I could say, Evelyn, get on a plane and come right now. But you're, you know, it's it's so hard with the passport issue. Okay, um, okay. Delphin's got a big old question here. I'm not sure if I'll be able to answer this one. Delphin, student right now here in Canada, architecture degree, Philippines, or studying architecture, tech, Centennial College. Good to say that I can consider Alberta Express Insurance Path. Okay, so Delphin, this is a classic example of someone who says, hey Mark, can you tell me if I qualify or not? This is not something that I can do here because it only relates to you, Delphin, and I consider that legal advice. So information, lots of information I'm sharing freely, but when it comes to whether or not you qualify, whether or not to choose Alberta, another province, whether or not your background works for eligibility, that's legal advice and that's something that I'd have to direct you to. Um, basically go back to the website here, Delphin, and, uh, and, and click on the start here button and book a consult and we can go through all of that together. How much do I charge guys? It's, it's written right here on the site. Lots of people, um, you have to appreciate that I send questionnaires for you to fill in the information that you want to talk about, the answers that you need. Generally speaking, it doesn't take me any time at all because it's all up here, right? But um, it helps me to, to prepare before the consult. I get you to send me that. And then that 25 minutes that I charge $200, $210, that includes the 5% tax in Alberta per 25 minute consult, that right there, guys, is chock full of all of the information you need to get your questions answered and to move forward. So that's what I'd encourage for you, Delphin. All right, okay, we're closing in just about where we have to wrap up here, okay? Once again, Abdur, hello dear to you too. Pizza Cook, interested? Book a consult, my friend. Once again, it fits into, and another Facebook user, same thing. Consults are the way to go, okay. Yes, my Tommy, you're right, you're right. How far are you from completing the study permit course? You've been talking about it since last year. I just talked with Igor about it and I said, I've got to release that thing. I have to release the postgrad one that I'm doing. It's like one of these things where you're a finder, a minder, a grinder. And finally, now that I have my own firm, I'm getting everything set up. I've got some wonderful people that are gonna be working with me in addition to the great core that we have now. But I spent all my day doing this, the consults and doing reviews and working with the clients who retain me to, to, to go through their documents. And I care unbelievably about the clients that retain us. And so I give my heart and soul to them. But Wednesdays now I have carved out officially is the day that I work on the courses. No consults, no meetings, except tomorrow I do have my best friend that I'm helping him with, the Rural Northern Immigration Pilot in Clairsholm. He's one of the employers for the pilot and he's got someone identified that we're working with. And so tomorrow I am working with him, but generally Wednesdays are the day. And I was looking through my plan, my outline for the study permit course, and it's freaking awesome. It is, it is better than the express entry course. There is so much helpful tips and information in there. It's just a matter of creating it. So. Tomorrow I'm starting and I commit to you, my friend, my Tommy, that that sucker is going to get done. Maybe not by the end of the month, but it's going to get done in August for sure. All right. <laughs> okay. And and Igor's posting there. Congratulations. This is so awesome. I think to, uh, to the other people who were successful. Okay. My time is just about up here. Um, Jatin is asking about CRS. Is it possible? Once again, this is kind of a specific question, you guys. Not something that I can go through in detail. Um, Okay, this person error says I'm from Morocco. I have an admission for masters in France um, and I don't want to lose my chance. At the same time, I'd like to proceed with my application from France. Is it possible? Okay, um, I'm master's degree in France. Okay, I'm assuming you're going to school in France for your master's degree. Um, I would like to proceed with my application from France. Is it possible? 
I think you mean your express entry. Can you continue forward? Yeah, wherever you want to live. If you want to move to a different country, it doesn't impact on your permanent resident application. You're just going to update your address. Okay, and then Igor, great. He posted the consult thing on the Facebook page. Awesome. Okay, let's whip through a couple more and then I've got another. How many consults do I have booked this afternoon? This is always quite, uh, how do you describe it? Well, not comical, but it's, it's I think I have five booked <laughs> this afternoon. I've been doing everything to try to accommodate as many people as possible so that people don't have to wait. I just had another um, a wonderful meeting with a, a wonderful lawyer who is probably gonna join me um, and, and, and help me, who is just as knowledgeable as me, uh, just as helpful, just like Susan Wood, who my associate is, she's awesome as well. And, um, and so these consults, I've been really working hard to, to accommodate everyone. So I have one, two, three, four, five that start at two. <laughs> so back to back. So I had better wrap this up today. I want to give a very, very special thank you to all of you who've joined me. Um, once again, I do my best to try to answer, but all I have is an hour that I can spare. I basically give up my lunch for all intents and purposes to do this. Uh, be why? Because I love it. Because I want to help you guys. I want to be there to support you. Okay, let's finish off uh, Grigesh's question. Okay, I got an employment letter from my HR with basic details. So I've taken the reference letter, um, needed to merge the HR email proof employment letter reference letter in one doc. Okay. Gujesh, this is exactly the kind of thing that I deal with in my consultations. It's not possible to say, yeah, that's good enough or not without looking at the documents, reviewing them, looking at your duties, uh, seeing the supporting documents, if they actually have enough information in it. Um, that's really the, the, the reason why I have to direct you to a consult, my friend. All right. Okay, Abdul says I'm going through the I'm going through the best. Awesome, absolutely, Abdul. Okay, we're gonna wrap it up here, guys. I want to thank all of you for all that you've done to make this one fantastic. And yes, Canada is awesome. So grateful to be a Canadian citizen. So grateful to be a Canadian immigration lawyer. Grateful for the law degree that I got from the University of Manitoba. It's something that I treasure. It's, it's set me up into a place to, to be able to help people in ways I never could have before. I'm so grateful for my law degree. I'm grateful for my awesome staff, for Igor, for Susan, for Mauricia, who takes all of the intakes. She's down in St. Kitts. She's gonna be coming back to Canada here shortly. She's one of my past clients as well. You can see where I draw my staff from, right? Susan was an articling student that I had years back. She's so fantastic. And uh, we just have a fantastic team. I love what I do. I'm grateful to be in this awesome country, especially when we have a president down in the United States who's closing off immigration. The doors are open to Canada and I would be happy to help you and support you just like I am on these videos every day. All right, well, not every day, every Tuesday and Thursday. So I'll see you guys next Thursday, same place, same time, 1 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time, roughly 1 p.m. Sometimes I'm a little bit late, but wish you guys all the best as you are navigating this crazy world of Canadian immigration during COVID-19. Okay, take care guys.